Coming up to down the Leipzig Loco, we start to make our way through the knockouts of the Europa League and first up in the playoff round, we take on Sporting out of Portugal. <laughs> Welcome to episode 96 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we take on Sporting of Portugal in the knockout playoff round of the Europa League over two leagues. In between that we'll take on Cologne in the Bundesliga as well. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so or really and have been enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but not much to talk about before we get stuck into the first game of today's episode, because it's only a few days off the back of where we left things at the end of last week, that episode where we took on Schalke and Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner, so we can pretty much get straight into the action today. No injury concerns for our Europa League squad going into this first knockout playoff round, so that is good, because Leroy Sané not registered for this competition. I opted for Spalyak over him just with that injury hang over him, so it does mean we're pretty much at full strength going into this one. A couple of players are in there because some players still tight, in particular Zoran and Matthias Tell, so it does mean that Xerxes and Musa make their way into the first team, but apart from that, we are at full strength. Also worth noting, if we somehow get out to a big lead, Justin Blomier and Andrew Pittman, the first people who will probably come off the pitch being on those yellow cards, but we take on Sporting off the back of a good little run of form in the Bundesliga, and they aren't doing very well at all over in Portugal, only 10th in the league over there, and their recent form hasn't been that great. It includes a draw of Freiburg, and we played them a little while ago, just trying to find out where it was. It was back near the start of December, so actually a little while ago now, but picked up a 3-0 win over those guys. They did finish inside a top eight spot in the Europa League. Based on that form, I'm hopeful, we can pick up a win here, albeit this first league away from home. Could be a little bit tricky, but with that strong team that we are putting out for this one, hopefully we can pick up a decent result and make sure there's not too much pressure. Going into that second leg back at the Red Bull Arena, of course, that is where we play our home games. In the Europa League, but there's our team as we ran through before. We've got Zerkes in there for Zoran and also Musa in there. For Matthias Tell, because both of those players are on a heavy workload, but apart from that, we are at full strength and also got a very deep bench, of course, for these games in the Europa League. Mikel Mastis, a little bit apprehensive, it looks like, going to this one. Hopefully that's not going to be an issue, otherwise Spalyak will get some game time, as you can see, Sporting Club de Portugal. A little bit of a limited bench as well, and no manager. This should be a game in theory. We can pick up something from and hopefully make our way through fairly comfortably to the next round, the round of 16. In the Europa League, let's get through the pre-match interview and get stuck in to this first knockout round game. There you can see Sporting, they are going with a 4-1-4-1. They've got Hannibal in the midfield. And apart from that, honestly, doesn't look too dangerous. Cabral out left, I suppose, also. So a couple of players there in their midfield, but really no big names in that team. Here's our lineup as we've ran through a couple of times now. We'll get through this now and get stuck into the action, cut off that Europa League music, and hopefully get underway and get off to a good start here in Portugal. The first highlight at the four minute mark is in our favour of free kick. Hattado plays that one forward to Blomay, but for the most part, we started to pick things up in the latter stages of the Europa League league phase. Of course, for a long time, we weren't actually playing with the slightly edited Gagan press style. Of course, we did against the Anderlecht when they beat us, but still, we looked like the better team in that game just somehow did not pick up a result. But before then, some good wins to get us back inside of that top 24. So hopefully we can at least make our way through to that round of 16 and then see who we get drawn against. But so far, keeping position while well, Musa gets a big tug there. But thankfully, Pittman can float this one in it to the mixer. It's a brilliant start, only five minutes in. And Nicolo Amadori gets his head on the end of that one. It's a very typical goal for our Italian striker. And he makes it 1-0 nice and early here away from home. That is a brilliant start, of course, last season. On our way to winning the Conference League, we did run out to 2-0 leads quite early in the away leagues, only to usually get picked back 2-2, or that wouldn't be too bad going back home, but still, hopefully this season, with some of those changes that we have made in our defence in particular these days, ball backs instead of wing backs, and also central defenders instead of ball playing defenders, we can hold on a bit better late on in games, early stages, 
does look like here. We are on the front foot. Jordan Zerksy there. Lovely ball over the top from Justin Blomier. He's onside and puts that one away. Takes it somewhat around the goalkeeper. And only 11 minutes into this one, we already have a 2-0 lead and maybe starting to see why the sporting team have been struggling. It's a really good first-time ball that from Justin Blomier, the goalkeeper. Probably could have stayed on his feet there for a little bit longer, but good pass and Jordan Zerksy coming into the team. Takes it somewhat around the goalkeeper and puts it away. It's a very tight offside call, but I think that one has been allowed justifiably so, and we take an early 2-0 lead, and maybe this is a game where we can actually put this tight to bed nice and early, and if that's the case, we might have to come back for that Cologne game, or we at the highlight is right from the restart, and might be in favour of Sporting Club to Portugal, but so far, we are well and truly on the front foot, and thankfully there, Osvaldo wins that ball back for us. Now, Tunde Musa starts to try and get something going down that left-hand side, unfortunately, though, Marked well there by Coley. And now they have the ball here. Do Sporting trying to get something going for the first time in this game. Quelho, not Coley. Why am I thinking of Indian cricket players? But they keep the ball here at the moment. Do Sporting. Nice one over the top there on that far side. To Giovane. He starts to eye up his man on that right-hand side of our defence. And sick of they put this ball here into the middle of the box. And Thomas Colho must have heard me butcher his name. He's taken it out on us and puts that one away. In the bottom right corner, unfortunately, this might be back to game on 2-1 after only 13 minutes. And this is looking like already it could be quite an entertaining game. I think someone there might have got a touch on that Escobar. Probably should have tried to shut him down. He might have actually got a deflection for that goal, but it will still count, albeit a few minutes later at 2-1. We are down the other end for a corner of ours, and Nicolo Amadori will make up for that goal immediately. And we get our two-goal cushion back, 3-1. After only 14 minutes, lots of goals in this one already, and lots of time left as well for us to hopefully grab a couple more, but that is encouraging. Three goals away from home for the first time in a European knockout game, and that makes it 3-1, and that gives us a two-goal buffer very shortly. Off the back of Sporting, pulling this one back 2-2-1, albeit only a few minutes later, and they do have a front. They try and play that one forward 2-2. Mitty now back to Lukic, and it is Anderson who is on the ball. Amadori there trying to do some good work and get that ball back for us, but at the moment Sporting holding it fairly well, just starting to make their way into our half, but good work there from Blomaye, now it's a ball played over the top, Amadori tries to win that, can't quite, and Sporting will get the ball back, Chermody just holds things up here, plays that back to Lukic, we're really trying to piss them in the midfield it looks like, and eventually do, it's actually through Osvaldo, and the ball finds Musa on our left-hand side, a little bit behind Mastis there. We do keep the ball now. Amadori with a decent shot there from quite a tight angle. Forces good save there out of Jao Virginia, an informed goalkeeper it looked like. Going into this game, so we are well and truly on the front foot. Amadori with a corner. That's a good chance there and another good save from the sporting goalkeeper to keep it at 3-1. But we are certainly on the front foot apart from that goal, which was scored off the back of our second. But thankfully, bounced back immediately. From a set piece, and again, we have a highlight here, only 20 minutes, and nice ball over the top there for Mikel Mastis from a tight angle, rockets that one top left corner, Sebastian Escobar, our captain, will pick up the assist, and we are battering Sporting here, and starting to see why this team might be in 10th on their domestic league, because they certainly were expected to be doing a lot better than that, but they are having a very poor season, and it looks like we might be getting through this tie very, very comfortably. If this does keep up only 20 minutes in, and already we have a 4-1 lead, and despite the fact that we are well and truly on the back foot in terms of position in this game, we are absolutely battering Sporting here, 4 goals to 1, and hopefully we can grab a few more and maybe put this tie to bed before we have to go back home, as I see if that is the case, wasn't expecting it, but we'll come back and show you guys the Cologne game and still I suppose the thumbnail for today might be a little bit of a giveaway, but Sporting there are on the attack, but thankfully that ball over the top for San Jose has far too much on it, but just past the half hour mark, 4-1 in front, this is going very well at the moment, now we're looking to play out from the back, Escobar drops back and plays out to Pittman, in a lot of space, down that left hand side, just tries to shrug off his man there, can't quite do so, so plays that back midfield, to Pesagro, I should say centre field, and we now get it up to our midfielders, another nice ball over the top there, from Escobar this time, picking out Musa goes far post, and I think that one was for Mastis, looking for a double, unfortunately, it comes off the post off the back of a deflection, so we do have a corner and so far have looked quite dangerous from these, but this time can't quite link up with Amadori, might be a chance here potentially for Sporting to do something 
on the counter-attack. They cannot. So we are still up by four goals to one. A couple of minutes shy now of half time. Does feel like things have calmed down just a little bit, albeit as I say that, it is a free kick in our favour. And Musa still in lots of space down that left-hand side, just inside the byline. Squares that one. I think it was for Amadori. Good block there from Vazquez. It does mean, though, we still have a corner, so putting a lot of pressure here on Sporting in the first half of this knockout playoff round. Again, we look for Amadori. Can't quite find him. Trying to hold the ball here on the edge of the box. Xerxes tries to float that one back into the mixer. It's cleared and still up by four goals to one. Only a couple of minutes shy of half time. Three minutes of added time we get through. And that was a pretty good first half. A little bit frustrating off the back of scoring our second goal. They grab one back, but off the back of that, we got two more. Amadori is on a hat trick. Also, Xerxes and Mastis. They have picked up goals. And that is a very good first half. 4 1 in front already. Starting to think that we might not need to show you guys the second leg of this game, show you guys that Cologne game instead. But we'll just make some subs here at halftime. As I said, a couple of players on yellow cards that we could take off in this situation. Also, a couple of others not doing as well as the rest of the squad who are on green ratings. So what we're going to do is bring on Sicker at right back. We'll actually take off our entire defense here. Bring on Comedio and Alte at center back. Vochin at right back for Sicker. We'll just leave out there at the moment those players on those good ratings, but as I said, our last two subs in this game, it might be Pittman and Blomé coming off with that yellow card situation, but hopefully if we can score a few more goals and put this tight to bed, that's something that we can do in a very good early chance there too. Escobar trying to put that one in the top right corner, but the goalkeeper there for Sporting comes up with a very good save. It is a corner though for us, and Amadori gets his head on the end of that one. Camillo lurks at the far post. He was on side. I thought that might be a little bit of a glitch that showed he would be off because that's sometimes something that does happen. But he grabs his first goal of the season straight off the bench. And that's now 5-1. And this is starting to look like a case of getting this tie put away in this first league. Hopefully, we might be able to just really put the foot down here and make a mark on Sporting on the scoreboard. And shortly off the back of grabbing that fifth goal, we do have another throw in there down that far side. Now it is Faliu Alte taking his time on the ball, plays it forward now to Mastis. Good overlap here, Blomaye might find it's Voch, and he starts to cut inside, but again, he'll find Mastis. Can he square this with someone? He does, and Jordan Xerxes is also now on a hat-trick as we make it 6-1, only five minutes into the second half, and we are absolutely blowing Sporting away here in Portugal. Can definitely see why these guys are struggling in this current season, but good work there down that right-hand side, Mastis. Squares at the goalkeeper there really had a chance to clear that one with his feet, but it finds Xerxes. He taps that one home now. Him and Amadori are both on hat tricks. We'll see if we can get any more goals before we hit the hour mark and maybe make our last couple of substitutions. It doesn't look like that is going to be the case. So just thinking here, we've got the yellow card situation and also some players who are quite injury prone. We probably don't want to lose some big players. In a situation like this, so I think we'll actually take off Escobar playing well, but very injury prone when he plays too much to James Baker. Can come on for him, so at the moment, just risking things a little bit with that yellow card situation, albeit with us being up by six goals to one, it wouldn't be the worst thing if some of those players picked up yellow cards anyway, because if we continue to pile on the goals, we might put out a fully rotated team for that next league anyway, as we should be able to hold on to a 6-1 advantage, or maybe even more, as we are still on the attack here. Vochin down the right-hand side, tries to play one over the top there for Amadori. On a hat-trick, kind of tries to chip that one over the goalkeeper. Unfortunately, it comes off the crossbar, and off the back of that, we are shown the front, so are still on the attack. Baker starts to make his way in, a little bit loose on the ball there, and misses out to Barton. Now, Hatado, who's had very little ball in this game, was trying to control it, but thankfully Pittman wins that back for us. Nice ball through there, looking for Mastis, but unfortunately Sporting this time do cut it out in defence, but again, they clear it straight into the path of one of our players. Now Mastis tries to hit that one forward from the edge of the box, but straight into the path of Virginia in goal for Sporting. They have 15 minutes left in this one to try and get at least a couple of goals back, otherwise they're pretty much dead to rights in this time. They play a ball over the top there for Hitaro, but Pittman will deal with that danger, certainly. Looking a bit more solid defensively with the fullbacks and central defenders than we did under the old style gag and press the higher tempo one with the ball playing defenders as well as the wingbacks. But this one has been a pretty long highlight now. It's Baker on the ball, switches out to Vochin in space on that right hand side. Mastis is just in behind, takes a long range shot 
and somehow that has beaten Virginia, who to be fair, is actually having a decent game in goal, has made a couple of big saves in this one, otherwise the scoreline could be a lot worse, but that makes it 7-1, and they are getting pumped here, our sporting, bit of curve on that, it just finds its way into the top right corner, don't think the goalkeeper was actually expecting that one, to hit the target, 7-1 with 15 minutes left, we're just checking now on some player fitness, we've got Zerksy and Musa down to Red Hearts of course, they are both players who did come in for this game, what we're going to do is actually try Danny Hermel out on the left hand side, obviously we want to give Matthias Tell and Zoran a rest, already being quite injury prone coming into this game, so that'll be our last sub and we'll see what Danny Hermel can do in the last 15 or so minutes of this one, but we are bashing Sporting here and should be already through to the draw for that round of 16 unless something horrible happens in the last five minutes of this one and also in that second leg which I think now will show you guys the highlights of off the back of our game in the Bundesliga where we will take on Cologne but to be fair that's another game that we should be winning especially off the back of a performance like this one and Danny Hermo off of the bench playing on the wrong side of the field sets up Niccolo Amadori and he picks up a hat trick and this is an absolute thumping we are giving to Sporting away from home. Nice ball over the top there. And it is Hermel who picks out Amadori, one of our players, on a hat-trick. Because all of our front three were on one going into that goal. Now Amadori, he picks it up and makes it 8-1. Look at that domination in the stats. We'll actually go attacking late just to see if we can really put a bit more hurting here on Sporting. It might be a record scoreline this for us in a game, but down the other end there, chance for Hitato, but thankfully it's a decent save from Ricardo San Jose, but what a performance this has been, only one player not on a green rating out there, in fact two at San Jose in goal, as well as James Baker in the midfield, I'm surprised that San Jose has not gone up off the back of that save, but that was a lot more than I expected against the team like Sporting, as I said at the end of last week, I thought that was probably the toughest draw that we could have got for this first knockout playoff round. But as it works out, that was a very good draw for us because off the back of the first leg, we already have an 8-1 lead. I dare say that not many other teams in this round will be that far in front going into the second leg. And as I said earlier, I think now that changes the plan for today's episode. We'll come back shortly and take on Cologne in the Bundesliga before updating you guys on the draw for the round of 16 off the back. Of the second leg of this one, because back at home, we should be holding on to a seven goal advantage. You'd like to think there are the other score lines from the other ties. Interesting that Raul Sociedad are behind and also that RZ got handled pretty comfortably there by Anderlecht. But that is a very, very dominant performance. We pick up an 8-1 win in the first leg of our knockout playoff round. Over Sporting will come back shortly and get stuck in unexpectedly to some Bundesliga action as we take on Cologne. So a massive win in that first game of today's episode. It does mean we can kind of skip over that second leg now. So because of that, we come back a little bit earlier than expected and are going to take on 15th place Cologne in the Bundesliga. We currently are just sitting outside of a Champions League qualifying spot, albeit Wolfsburg above us do have a game in hand. So even a win here might not change things too much, but could build a good gap up on Gladbach who are behind us and we have a game in hand on them. So hopefully we can pick up a win here, continue that form from that sporting game, that obviously worked out quite well, playing a strong team in that one, off the back of resting quite a few key players for Wolfsburg at the end of last week, does mean now we can play a strong team here in the Bundesliga game, and then roll out the rotation players for that second leg, with that 8-1 lead, but here is Cologne, here's what they look like a team, who can be a little bit tricky for us at times, but at the moment, they are down in 15th where they were expected to be, and with this one being at home, you'd like to think this will be another one, especially off the back of that demolition of sporting away from home, and they come to this one in some pretty mixed form, it's fair to say. In the Bundesliga, the only recent wins do come against teams who are down in the bottom half of the table, so hopefully another game here where we can pick up a win, and as I said, sneak ourselves for the moment into one of those Champions League qualifying spots. And because of the situation coming up in that second leg of that Europa League knockout round, it does mean we can put out our first team rotation for this game, everyone is not on a heavy workload, so that's quite good. Also worth noting before this game as well, Ricardo San Jose, he came out as gay, which is something that's not happened before on the channel. It was kind of cool, so we'll see if that influences his performance on the field at all. It shouldn't, you'd think so, but that was a first-time thing here 
on the channel. We might bring up that news item off the back of this game because I actually forgot about that before I did see the team sheet, but that's something that hasn't happened to me on FM before. So that was quite interesting, but hopefully we can pick up a good result here as we do take on Cologne. There we are, as I said, first choice for the first time in quite a while in the Bundesliga, obviously being able to rotate quite heavily now in that second leg of the Europa League with their 8-1 lead over Sporting. There are Cologne going with that same formation as we are. There's that Bundesliga table, a win here as we saw before. Should get us above Wolfsburg and also we could actually sneak above them as well in terms of goal differential, which could be important if this does become quite a tight fight come the end of the season. For that last qualifying spot for the Champions League still looks like a free horse race for the Bundesliga title, but early stages in this game and not quite going as well as it did in that sporting game. But we are on the front foot, but so far no highlights. A yellow card there to one of the Cologne players, but so far nothing happening in terms of on-pitch action that we have seen. We'll encourage the guys a bit more here and hopefully they can start to get something which is worth showing us and making our way towards the half-hour mark. We eventually get a highlight. Justin Blomay plays that one forward to Amadori. Now Sika tries to find Mastis. What can he do just on the edge of the box? Plays that one out to Sika. Floats one in there for Zoran back in the team and pumps that one away on the volley. He opens the scoring with the first highlight of the game. And thankfully, it looks like we are going to continue that form from that sporting game. We make it 1-0. Unfortunately, Wolfsburg getting the job done currently over Eintracht Frankfurt, so it does mean we might be staying in that fifth spot off the back of this game, but that is a decent start, even though it has taken half an hour, 1-0 here, and we have been on the front foot so far, so hopefully that continues off the back of grabbing that opening goal, and a few minutes later, we have a front down that far side, Matthias Tull also back in for this game, tries to flip that one far post for Mastis, of course, De Jong there at left back for Cologne, Quite a good player. We were actually looking at signing him before we actually signed Matthias Tell in the transfer window at the start of the season, being homegrown nation. But unfortunately, he signed a new contract with Cologne. As it works out, he's not having the greatest game so far because we're kind of exposing him down that side with that ball that got played in for Zoran. But that was a pretty quiet first half. But thankfully, we have been on the front foot and we go into the sheds with a 1-0 lead. Just looking here at some player ratings. Everyone out there doing a decent enough job, so I don't actually know if we need to make any subs here going in to the second half, but hopefully we can score at least one more goal, grab a cushion, and make sure that we pick up three points to now. Probably keep pace with Wolfsburg, as when an update of that game last came in, it looked like they had a 3-1 lead, albeit early sub here in the second half, because Pittman, he has picked up a yellow card, he won't be playing that next game in the Europa League, obviously not going to risk him in that one when we don't need to already on a yellow in that competition, but Ryan can get some game time here as well as against Sporting, but a highlight here where Cologne were on the attack from a free kick, but thankfully we deal with that danger eventually and find Mastis on that right-hand side. Now Hatado tries to play that one forward. We're sticking to that right-hand side, but eventually go all the way back to San Jose and goal plays that one over to Pesaguero. Lots of space down the left-hand side. We eventually find with Ryan, he tries to play a long ball forward for Matthias Tell. Now Spasijevic puts a bit of pressure there on the Cologne goalkeeper, we're actually going to win this one back, although we don't put there for a minute. We might try and do a long-range shot, which might catch the goalkeeper off, but it was there De Jong who was in position, but thankfully Mastis wins that one back. Now Escobar plays it over the top for Zoran, who might have been offside. Apparently not. He puts that one away, grabs a double, and makes it 2-0. I certainly think one of our players there was offside. There was about three of them, and a couple of them were in front of that defensive line, but thankfully Zoran was not one. Blomaye plays it to Escobar. That's a very nice lofted pass through, and he tucks that one away nicely. Actually, really good finish that. Opens up his body, gets on his left foot, and sneaks it just inside that far post. Also, RB Leipzig will stay well and truly in that title fight, it looks like, with a 3-0 lead over Stuttgart. But good goal there to make it 2-0 coming up to the hour mark, and it does mean that potentially we can even make subs in this game if some of our first teamers get tied off the back of also playing against Sporting only a few days ago. Now Ryan's on the ball, plays it back to Pesaguero. It looks like we might be looking for a third goal in this one. They clear it though, do Cologne, and it goes back to Lubicic on a yellow card. They try and control it there, down that left-hand side. Sicker nearly won it for us, but unfortunately, a bit of a loose touch. And now Silva inside the box, squares that one for Dehi, and he puts it away. It goes through the hands of San Jose. Hopefully, he was offside. Otherwise, this game 
isn't quite over yet. We'll just wait to see what VAR does have to say. And indeed, don't even have to see it because the goal has already been a worry on the replay. Pratty plays that one for Basilva. It must be a tight call there on offside, but it goes straight at San Jose, who, to be fair, probably could have done better with that save, but still must be a bit too much power on that shot. It's a very close call for offside, but I suppose we got one of those in our favour in the sporting game. It is 2-1, just checking now on some player fitness coming up on the hour mark, and everyone out there is on a decent enough rank, so I think for now, don't need to make any changes just yet, and hopefully you can grab another goal to make sure we will pick up three points from this game, albeit as I say that a few minutes later, Justin Blomier does pick up a yellow card, so we'll bring on Manuel in his place, and also Mastis is only on a 6.5, as is Amadori, Suspaliak, and Kuseta can come on for those two. Also, Andre Hurtado on a 6.5, but I think for now we'll just leave our defence as it is, because our backup option today is Faliu Alte, who's definitely not quite as good as Hurtado, and still coming back from an injury. That might be our next substitution that we do make, but hopefully we can grab a third goal before we do get to that stage to make sure we have an advantage that we should be able to keep hold of, and we find Slicker off the back of a throw and just inside the box tries to square that one. It does find Zoran, who is on a hat trick, but unfortunately that one does go over the bar and we are still only ahead by one goal. Definitely a game we deserve to be winning. Just going to check now on some player fitness. And in fact, it's Osvaldo, who is down to a red heart. Andre Hurtado definitely on a worse rating, but I think it's probably a good idea here to play things safe. So we will take off Osvaldo for Alte with 15 minutes left, it'll be our last sub. Also, Alte can go out right. Hataro out left seeing as Alte can also play at right back. So there's our last substitution, hopefully. Don't regret that one with Osvaldo having quite a good game. But only a few minutes later, we have a throw down that far side. Manuel is on the ball, plays that one back to Alte. Fresh off the bench now, Escobar playing well today. Now Zoran gets a big chance for Matthias Tal, but cast in there with a good save. And Tal was on sides of that goal. Would have counted, but unfortunately, good save there from the Cologne goalkeeper. We do still have a set piece, though. Very dangerous from these in that previous game. We, we did take on Sporting, but unfortunately this time, can't quite link up with anyone. Of course, no Amadori out there anymore, which does mean that's one less target. We do have from set piece with 10 minutes left in this one and only a one goal lead. We will just tell our guys to be a bit more disciplined and also slow the pace down in terms of our goalkeeper distribution just to hopefully make sure that Cologne don't get a chance to potentially grab an equaliser from this game because that would feel pretty harsh, honestly. But we might put this game to bed a bit more comfortably. We have a free kick shortly off the back of those changes in Escobar with a good chance there on the volley, quite similar to what Zoran did a little while ago, but that one also goes over the bar. We are still up by two goals to one. There's five minutes here of added time, but it looks like we are going to get through it and we pick up a win in the Bundesliga, an important win too, because it probably means we keep up with Wolfsburg in that race for that last Champions League qualifying position. But that, as you can tell by the XG match story and the stats, was a fairly dominant win, just a little bit frustrating that Cologne got back into that game somewhat with that goal in the second half. But thankfully before then, Zoran picked up a double and he leads us to a 2-1 win. So it does mean we stay in fifth on the Bundesliga table and extend our gap on the likes of Gladbach and Schalke off the back of that 2-1 win over Cologne. We'll come back shortly and show you guys highlights from the second leg of that sporting tie with an 8-1 lead. And hopefully off the back of that, come back as well with the draw for the Europa League round of 16. And we are back with the highlights from the second leg against Sporting in the Europa League. Obviously with that 8-1 lead, we did skip over this game on camera. And we got off to a decent start of first half penalty, which Cusetta coming in for Amadori in this one. Did put away then late in the second half. Was a shot there from outside the box from Baker. It does fall quite kindly off the Virginia save to Cusetta. He picks up a double, as you can see. Played a heavy rotation for this game, even in goal, but thankfully still picked up a turn win to keep that momentum going from that first game in today's episode. So it does mean we go through to the round of 16 off the back of a 10-1 aggregate win over Sporting. And the other teams that did get through that round were Eintracht, Frankfurt, Galatasaray, Lech Poznan, Montpellier over Luzon, Real Sociedad came back just enough to beat Lokomotiv, Plovdiv, LASK get past Quadabag, and also Anderlecht, they beat RZ, of course, a team we did defeat on our way to win the Conference League last season. So it's already showing some of the teams we took on in the knockouts of that competition last season. 
not quite copying it as much in the Europa League, but next up for us, it is the round of 16. We've just had the draw for that, and it is going to be an all-German clash as we do take on Freiburg, a team currently down in ninth on the Bundesliga table, a team, as we showed you guys earlier, before taking on Sporting, that we did beat 3-0 back in December with that adapted Gagan press that we are now using. So based on that, that does actually look like quite a winnable tie for us. And also based on the Bundesliga positions, so that is actually quite a kind draw for that round of 16. Maybe we can make our way through to the final eight of the Europa League. And as you can see off the back of that win over Cologne, still in a pretty good spot in the Bundesliga as well. And just going back in time a little bit as well, just to reveal that item that, as I said, in the build-up to that previous match did come up regarding San Jose. As I said, the first time that's happened in any of my saves so far on Football Manager. But that will do it for today's episode of Thumping Win Over Sporting in the First League. Of that knockout playoff round, it does set up a round of 16 or German clash against Freiburg, and we'll bring that to you guys in tomorrow's episode and also keeping ourselves in a good spot in the Bundesliga with that 2-1 win over Cologne, if you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well until tomorrow for those two legs against Freiburg, provided we don't do something like we did in that first league over Sporting, but I dare say, with them being from the Bundesliga, that is highly unlikely, but until tomorrow for the Europa League round of 16, thank you very much for watching, keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.